Hi, we're here today with Amber MacArthur, a technology and social networking guru. <laughs> How does it feel to be considered a guru in technology and all the social networking? Uh, well, I think it's a good thing in some ways. It means people think that you're an expert in a certain topic, so I don't really mind the word, word all that much. I know there's people out there who don't like the word guru or expert, but at the end of the day, I think we are all looking for a way to classify someone, and that kind of works in this situation. Um, how did you get involved in all of this? Um, in 1999, I moved out of San Francisco and worked in the dot-com industry at a company called Razorfish, which was a really leading uh, web design company during that time. And uh, I started doing web consulting and information architecture and I mean, designing websites. And I just loved the whole space and how creative it was and just saw that there was obviously going to be this huge potential on the internet and uh, just jumped on it and have done it since then. Um, so did you, like, by, like, in your mindset back then, did you think, that where we are now is how we were going to be? Um, I didn't really think so. You know, I always think of the, the social network movie, you know, the Facebook movie mm -hmm. that just came out. And I think back to my days in San Francisco in 1999, and if you had have told me that they were going to make a major Hollywood blockbuster movie uh, based on a website, I would never have believed you. And so that really shows you in a decade how much things have changed and how social media and the internet, it really is uh, it really integrated into all facets of our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, where do you, like, how far do you think we're going to get with all of this? Uh, well, I think we're just uh, at the very beginning. I mean, social media and everything that's happening on the internet is really in its infancy. The internet is so young. Uh, I think there's some great opportunities, especially in developing countries for technology, like mobile telecommunications, for example. Uh, you already look at parts of Africa where farmers are using mobile technology to be able to check on crops and deal with their business that way, and little micropayments and those type of things. So I think that's particularly exciting. Um, and with all the different social media, well, like Facebook and Twitter and like podcasting, which one do you prefer? Do you have a pr preference? Um, I really love Twitter. I mean, I, I wouldn't say Twitter has changed my life, but I will say that Twitter is a really great tool for people to get out there and meet other people and also to use it as a platform to promote what you do. Uh, so is you like Twitter the best uh, because it's so like simple to use, basically? Well, I think one of the reasons is that it's so simple to use, and uh, also there's just a low investment as far as time. I mean, it's 140 characters or less, so if you're just you know waiting for the bus or you're sitting down somewhere for a minute, it's pretty easy to send a tweet or see what people are talking about. And in fact, a lot of the times, I, just, I get a lot of my news information from Twitter, and I use it a lot for sources when I'm looking for someone to base an article on or interview on one of my shows. Uh, so you have your own podcast, Command N, um, and I was just wondering uh, what you think the benefits of podcasting are versus just posting a link through Twitter or Facebook. Well, I think podcasting can be great in the sense that it's an audio or video file. And as much as it's wonderful to write text content, the reality is that, especially when you, it comes to video, it's one of the most powerful mediums in the world. And so if you're creating any type of content, a video podcast can, can be a great way to try to get your message out and promote what you do. And in fact, when I started working at City TV, which was my first job as a, a daily television news reporter, I was working as a host before then, uh, they discovered me because they were watching my podcast online. So I think that's one example of how it worked. Uh, so at City TV, uh, you were on the show Web Nation, um, and you it got pulled, and so you sort of left a spur of the moment. Um, how do you think that that made your fans feel because of the whole internet craze and City TV not really appreciating that? Well, for me at that time, I had way more fans online than I did on television. I mean, that was just the reality of the situation, which is one of the reasons that I felt comfortable leaving because I just didn't feel as though there was a huge fan base in terms of the people watching the show on television. And uh, um, so I still do the show today, and uh, you know, I'm just happy to have it back up and running and still do TV and online work as well. Thanks a lot, Amber. Thanks, guys.